Hey guys, and welcome back to my Pennsylvania series. This is going to be episode 18, and in this one we're going to look at the completed version of the operations area. So as you can see, I have done all the detailing, added in all the decorations. Um, I just kind of wanted to run through my thought process on a lot of this stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with the entrance area. I like using these little... Um, sheds as like guard shacks because obviously we don't have any guard shacks which is unfortunate and these are kind of the next best thing from an aerial view so I think they fit pretty well really it's just adding in a lot of uh, um, trees and planters and these little concrete barriers um, with the lake I kind of did the same thing that I uh, sorry not the lake the pond that I tend to do uh, a lot these days I did the same thing on the uh, park lagoon so I did it over here as well just fill in the interior with a bunch of rocks and make this nice little uh, rock wall and then add in the planters all around it kind of gives it a nice realistic look um, I made some of these gardens uh, added in the little barriers to kind of block them off and then just added some trees and some rocks and plants uh, with the parking lots I did the same thing that I did with the main parking lot added in all the little concrete barriers to act as bumper stoppers um, it would be nice if we had like an actual bumper stopper but since this game doesn't even actually have any real roads you know they wouldn't have any bumper stoppers um, added in a lot of tables uh, and some potted trees for this restaurant over here made it a little burger shack did some more gardens up in this area uh, filled in the space for the facilities areas as you can see I said there was gonna be a lot of containers and I wasn't kidding lots of containers boxes uh, these other little uh, container stacks uh, the idea is just to make the area looked like uh, a lot of storage and facilities, you know, so supplies, food, paper towels, you know, stuff like that. Obviously, a lot of these containers can have other tables and chairs, you know, other sorts of items, uh, uh, commodity items that can house different types of fossils, especially over in these two areas. Uh, I would imagine that a lot of these cargo containers are filled with different fossils and ambers and precious metals and stuff like that from the expeditions so over in this area you could definitely view this as like a commodity storage um, I added in some some of the cages uh, for the ranger teams kind of made sense to put them over in this area because the ranger team is just right across the street you could also use them for the medical facilities medical teams come and Maybe transport an, a new dinosaur. Let's see. Um, just a lot more trees and bumpers. And I filled in the R&D habitat. Uh, you've probably seen this in a lot of my other park videos. I love doing this kind of rock work to make these little caved in uh, lagoons. I feel like you see those in zoos a lot. Uh, Maybe it's a little bit more connected and uniform, but you know we work with what we got. But I kind of I really like doing stuff like this and making this nice little natural pond, uh, and then you just do you work with the the texturing, kind of make it a uh, sandy near the the shoreline, and then do more rock based stuff in the deeper end. Um, added in more trees, obviously, and some rocks to kind of give this a nice natural looking type habitat so like I said in the R&D video dinosaurs would be bred incubated and then hatched in the hatchery they probably grow up to a decent age and then move into this enclosed habitat um, as a slightly larger holding spot where they can be observed and tested and make sure that they're nice and healthy and whatnot before moving into the actual park so with the security air or excuse me the power plant area 
Uh, I did a similar thing. I wanted the power plant area to, I don't think I went over this before, but I wanted the power plant area to be a little bit more cut off from the rest of the operations area. They have their own extra layer of security. Uh, and the reason for that is because obviously power is very important, as was evident in the first movie. So there's an extra layer of security you got to go to, go through to get to the power plant area. And then once you get in, you have a nice little roundabout. I like doing this type of uh, situation with the roundabouts. Uh, it kind of acts as like a little drop-off area. So, you know, maybe somebody's coming off, dropping somebody off. They can stop here, get out, and go. Um, filled in the parking lot. Added in some more decorations. Lots of lamp posts. Uh, security cameras where possible. And, yeah. So... That's pretty much it. Uh, the ops area turned out exceptionally well, I think. I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the series. Um, as far as next steps go, we're going to start working on Carnivore Corner, I think is what I'm going to call it, which is going to be this section right here. Probably going to bring it all the way out to right about here. And so this whole space is going to be strictly carnivores. Kind of felt like it made sense to put them over here as close to the ranger teams as possible. Because again, if there is ever an emergency, a breakout, or anything like that, ranger teams are easily uh, deployable to the higher risk area. Herbivores will be on the other side. Tend to be more docile, not as aggressive or as dangerous. So, you know, it makes sense for them to be further away. So we'll put the carnivores over here. We'll start working on these layouts uh, in the next set of videos. Um, and yeah, I think I'll go ahead and end it here. I'll do some nice overhead shots and then uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.